Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here, and I hope you're ready for part two of our Google Data Studio tutorial. In this video, we're gonna get tactical. We're gonna talk about what you can do inside Data Studio. We're gonna draw some graphs, look at some tables of data, connect to Google Analytics as a data source, and really show you what it looks like when you put things together inside Data Studio. So if you've been curious about what you can do in Data Studio, but you've been afraid of trying it, or afraid of breaking something, have no fear. We're gonna give you an inside look inside Data Studio as to what you can do inside this video. So watch along as we go inside Data Studio and unlock the awesomeness. Okay, so now that we have an account inside Data Studio, you're probably wondering to yourself, what can we actually do inside of this product? What can we do inside of Data Studio? We accessed Google Data Studio, now what? Well, I'm here to tell you that starting with a blank canvas is painfully difficult. I've been in the business of creating reports, working with data for over 20 years. And every time that I start with a blank canvas and try to create magic, try to find inspiration from the data, I'm usually sorely disappointed. I usually spend a lot of time spinning my wheels or becoming overwhelmed with the data that's coming in there or just saying to myself, now what? So starting with a blank canvas can be painfully difficult or overwhelming. And this video is meant to be a way to help you get over that by just showing you the basics of what you can do inside of Google Data Studio. And so I'm gonna answer that question for you. What can you do in Data Studio? And in order to do that, we're gonna go back into Google Data Studio and we're gonna check in on our Google Data Studio account. Okay, so here we are back in Google Data Studio. You can see that there are a lot of options available to us. Now, when you log into your account, you might already see the reports that are owned by you or reports that have been shared with you. Obviously, since we have a brand new account, we really have nothing to go on in here. The other thing you'll notice here is that Google does say start a blank canvas report, or you can choose from one of their many predefined templates. If you click on the template link here, you can see that Google has all kinds of different reports for different platforms that are out there. There's ones for Google Analytics, Google Search Console product, Google Ads, YouTube, Google Sheets. There's one that combines Google Analytics and Google Ads. There's one just purely on Google Analytics, Google Sheets, and then Google's BigQuery product. The other thing that you're going to notice is that there's the Welcome to Data Studio start here. Let's click on that one and see what it's all about. So if you're a very curious person who likes to read ahead, I would recommend going through the guided tour of Google Data Studio. So what are some of our options that are available to us inside of Data Studio? As you can see, we can look at our data sources, we can explore things, but really Google's driving us to creating a report, and that's what I wanna focus on for the rest of this video. Talking about when we create reports, how do we do it, and what options are available to us. And as you're looking at this video, remember, this is a progression, and this video is just gonna show you what you can do inside of Google Data Studio, and then we have upcoming videos that are gonna show you things like getting started with reports and using these templates that are available to us, how do we fill them out, what's a data source, what are our best options, and also what types of controls are available inside Data Studio, what kind of charts can you create, and how do you make things look good. For now though, I just want to click on a blank canvas because this is how most of us are going to explore things. This is how most of us are going to get comfortable with what we can do inside of the tool. So here we are going into a blank canvas and it's saying, here's what you need to do to get started. You need to connect to a data source, you need to visualize, and then finally you can share your items. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. And Google's asking us to agree to the terms of service. Of course, I want you to read through these things thoroughly and make sure everything you're doing is compliant. And then you can acknowledge the terms of service and click on accept. And then you're gonna choose whether you wanna get emails from Google Data Studio. Now, I don't really want emails from Data Studio because I have multiple accounts and the other ones are receiving emails. But if you wanna get emails from Google, definitely click on the yes, please, if you want them. So now we're going to go back and work on our blank report. And here we are now with a blank canvas. Now, as you can probably imagine, staring at a blank canvas can be really frustrating. In fact, Google's locked this thing down, so there's not really much we can do unless we create a data source. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, what the heck is a data source? Why does Google want us to connect to them? And what is this all about? What does it mean? 
Now here's one of the secret sauces behind Google Data Studio. You need to have data in order to get into Google Data Studio. So as you can see, we can't do anything unless we connect to some sort of data. Now fortunately for us, in our brand new account that we just created, Google has made several data sources available to us. And these are sample data sources, meaning that this data is coming in from Google as a sample. It's anonymous data that Google makes available to us that we can play around with and get used to when it comes to Google Data Studio. So I'm gonna click on Google Analytics because Google Analytics is my favorite thing in the world and I'm gonna add it to this report. And once I click on adding it to my report, Google's gonna say, do you allow this to happen? And yes, I'm going to allow this to happen. And now we have an added data source and as you notice, all kinds of different controls become available to us. We have chart options you can see up here. We have numbers where you can put in a number. We have even more charts. You have text boxes, images, rectangles, circles, date pickers, filtering controls, and even a control to look at the data. Now you're gonna become very familiar with each of these controls as we go forward, but for now I just wanna show you what it's like to create a chart and why data sources are so important. So I'm just gonna choose the first chart that's here. It's called a time series. And if you just click on that, what happens is clicking on a chart doesn't really do anything. You click on it and then Google wants you to draw the area where the chart is gonna be. And as we look in here, now it's taking in my sample Google Analytics data. It's choosing a dimension automatically. It's choosing a metric automatically. It's choosing a date range automatically and everything else is pretty much blank. And so what Google is doing is they're creating a chart based on some default settings that are out there. Now, of course, the value in the charts we create goes way beyond just using the default settings. But for now, we're just gonna stick with the basics and leave it as Google suggests. So we have the most basic of basic reports right now. We have a single line chart that's showing us traffic by day for the last, I believe to be 30 days. And that's really what Google Data Studio is at its heart. It's really just a way for you to take the data that you've collected around your business, whether it's a spreadsheet, your Google Analytics account, your advertising data from Google Ads, or any number of connectors that Google lets you connect to. But basically you need to have data on your business or let Google access the system that generates data on your business. You need to connect to it and then you need to find a way to visualize it in a way that makes sense for your organization. And of course, in our strategy lessons, we really talked about how you want to understand the objectives of your company first before you spend a lot of time generating reports, because it's going to be way easier to do it once you know what your strategy is. I'm going to click back on this chart control now. And as you can see, I sort of went over the data source piece pretty quickly. But basically what we're doing is we're connecting to a Google Analytics account. Now this Google Analytics account is actually the demo Google Analytics account that is available to any one of us. And so one of the first things I ever do when I create a chart or a table of data inside of Google Data Studio is that I go back to my original data source and verify that everything is working correctly. And so in order to make this work in our brand new account that we just created, I went and found the Google Analytics demo account We'll put this link into your lesson notes so you can see exactly how to get at this demo account. And if you go halfway down the screen, you can see how to access the demo account. And now you can see that you have access to the Google Analytics demo account. Now notice here inside of Google Analytics, we have access to the Google Merchandise Store Master View. This is the Google Analytics demo account for anybody who wants to learn Google Analytics. And so we can play around with the data, we can look at our date ranges, and we can see exactly how things are coming together. Now I'm gonna to go to the last 30 days, hit apply, and just see if this mimics the chart that we created inside of Data Studio. So I'm gonna go back into our Data Studio report, and as you can see, this looks pretty close. Now it doesn't look like it started at the exact same date range. This is the last 28 days, excluding today. And in the other report, we had 30 days. But as you can see, things look pretty similar. We have these little mounds here, and then we have a spike coming up at this time period. So if we go back into Google Analytics, we can pretty much verify that we are looking at the same data back and forth and that we have accessed the proper account. And this is a key to creating valuable and valid reports inside of Google Data Studio. 
Now, as I'm looking at this, I did notice one thing that's a little bit different. This says sessions, whereas in analytics, it says users. So let's change that control to say sessions, just to make sure we are looking at things as an apples to apples comparison. Notice the spike is still there, but now we are looking at the right data. And if you want to verify things even further, you can go back into here and you can go in and you can say, for example, that you want to add data labels. So I want to add data labels and it's going to tell you exactly the numbers that you're looking at on this chart. Now this is pretty ugly, but we can enable it temporarily just to make sure that these numbers match up. And so I see 4316 at the spike here. I'm going to go back into Google Analytics and this says 4171. So what is happening here? This looks pretty similar, but it's not the exact same data. But again, we're just getting familiar with Data Studio here. So I don't want to spend a lot of time trying to chase down data integrity or really try to understand what's going on here. We're just going to keep on moving on and exploring and understanding what can you do inside of Data Studio. So basically what you can do inside of Data Studio is you can create different controls. You can basically recreate the interface of your other reports. We can recreate Google Analytics inside of Data Studio. Of course, that brings up the question, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to recreate Google Analytics inside of Data Studio when Google Analytics is here and it looks good? Well, one reason might be because then you can put your logo on the reports. Another reason might be because then you can filter and make the data look how you want it to. Another reason might be that you don't want to give access to Google Analytics to everybody in your organization, but you want to be able to create a chart or some kind of dashboard that you can embed in your website. Now notice if you look here, you can say, I want to embed this report. So you can create a report and give people access to the data that you want to show them that's available inside of Google Analytics or other reporting tools. And you can place it on a website so people can get access to the analytics data they need, but not as much access as they would get if they were inside of your Google Analytics account. You can also easily download reports. You can copy them. You can refresh your data to make sure it's coming in clean every single time you look at it. And also there's a view mode where you can view your report without the ability to make edits to it. And so if you just want to show somebody a report where they can look around, they can interact with the report, they can even see inside of your tables, you can do that all inside of Data Studio. So you can give view only access to your reports and let people do some kind of exploring, but not give them too much information or not give them the wrong information that you don't want to display. So that's the difference between view mode and edit mode inside of Data Studio. Now remember, blank canvases can be really frustrating, difficult. They're not going to look very good because we're not really focused on design here. We're focused on what we can do. We can turn off the data labels, make this thing look better. You can go in here and you can look at the different controls and you can see what you can develop. So I would encourage you to click around and to try the different controls and to try to create just a few charts using the Google data. You can't break anything, which is really cool because think about it. Do you think Google would allow you to break their own analytics just by playing around? Definitely not. So they're giving you access to the sample data and you really can't break anything. And frankly, for that matter, anytime you're accessing data from Google analytics or a Google sheet inside a data studio, you can't break anything. As long as you have access, it's read only access. So you're not making any changes to the data itself. You're just making changes to how it's displayed. And so that's why I'm encouraging you to explore, to play around with the blank canvas, to get familiar with Data Studio because it's really cool and it's really fun to play around with everything you can do. Now let's give this report a name. I'm going to call it Data Studio Demo 1, just a generic name, and that's going to automatically save it for us. And to close up this video, I'm going to go back into my Data Studio home. You can see our Data Studio Demo 1 is now available to us. And you can see these templates that are available. So we just accessed Google Analytics. And for this video, I want to stick with just a single data source of Google Analytics using the Google Analytics demo account. If you click here, you can add this report into your Google Data Studio. And so all you have to do to use this report is click on Use Template. Google's going to allow you to choose which data source you want to use. And as you can see, the original one is using the Google Analytics data from the demo account. And the new one, we're going to continue to use that Google Analytics data. Now, if you feel ambitious in the future, we're going to show you how to add in your own data source and recreate this report using your own data. But for now, we're just going to use a sample data source. Okay, so here we are inside of the sample report. And notice that this chart is a little bit prettier version of the chart we just drew. 
And notice that there's other charts that are in here. There's also KPIs and numbers that we're looking at. There's all kinds of cool enhancements, coloring choices, and just an overall better looking aesthetic than our blank canvas we started with. And that's the reason why I recommend starting with a template whenever possible, because staring at a blank canvas can be really frustrating. And it's something that gets in the way of the inspiration that you get from these templates. Now I'm not going to go into too much depth about how to change this template, but as you can see here, if I click on any report, it has very similar results to what I had before. I have my data source, which is the default sample Google analytics account, the same time dimension. Instead of looking at 28 days, this is looking at 30 days. We're still looking at the same metric of sessions, but as you can see, there's a comparison here to the previous period. This is something that's new. There are lots of things you're going to learn as you click around on these sample templates to see how other people create these charts. That's one of the ways that I learned Google Data Studio when I was just getting started. I clicked around on all the templates. I saw how people did it. I took things that I liked and then I recreated it. So if you like this particular chart, you can look at the settings. You can see what data they're pulling in. It's all available. It's all transparent right here inside of Data Studio. You can look at the style. You can see how they're putting it together. You notice that they put in their own color scheme here. They're showing the axes. You can remove them if you want to. You can reverse the direction. There's all kinds of cool stuff you can do within these charts. And we're going to have plenty of time to play around with these charts in upcoming videos. But for this video, I just want to close it out and say it's really fun playing around with templates. It's really fun seeing what others come up with how they handle data, how they visualize things, and how they got stuff to work in a way that looks appealing. More appealing, for that matter, than anything I could create with a blank canvas. Because my blank canvas is ugly in comparison. My blank canvas is not something that I'm very proud of yet compared to this sample report. But over time, if you learn how these things work and you borrow the elements that you like out of these sample reports, you're gonna take your blank canvas you're going to take your company objectives and you're going to be able to create an awesome dashboard that blows it away. That looks even better than any of these preformed templates. And the reason why it looks even better is not so much in the design. It's because it means more to your organization. It's more local. It's more specific. That's really where the value is. It's creating something that really makes sense for your organization that really helps you measure how you're tracking towards meeting the targets of your business. And that's what we're going to learn as we go through this course on Google Data Studio. So to summarize what we learned in this lesson, Google provides you with comprehensive templates and sample report data. It's all available to you. Even if you're a random stranger like me, signing up for an email address on the spot, clicking on a few buttons, agreeing to the terms of service, Google made this data available to me and they make it available to you as well. And since Google is so generous to make it available to us, I recommend you familiarize yourself with these free data sets to really understand the interface, how it works, and what's available to you. Your exploration in combination of what we're teaching in this class, it's really going to drive home what's available to you inside of Data Studio. From a navigation perspective, every report that you create is available in one spot. Now you notice that I created my Data Studio Demo 1. That report was available to me in my interface the second that I saved it. So every single report you create becomes available to you in that same interface. If you're wondering how you should approach things, I say learn the basics using Google's data and then become more adventurous over time as you understand what's available to you inside of Data Studio. And finally, you can't break anything if you use Google's data. Google would not make that data available to you if it was something that you could break, something you could manipulate, something that was a trade secret of theirs. It really is a sample set of data that you can use to perform analysis in a way that's enjoyable, in a way that is fun to discover, and in a way that has no impact whatsoever on your business or Google's business. It's really all about learning, and I'm thankful that Google was so generous to give that to us. So that's all for this lesson. Hopefully you enjoyed this view of what you can do inside of Google Data Studio.